snitches get stitches and more prison time and everybody hating you and boy this guy just can't catch a break Hey everybody, what's going on today? We are going to be talking about a movie I watched on Amazon Prime uh, that I think was supposed to come out in theaters a few different times. Today we're going to be talking about The Informer starring Joel Kinnaman. Uh, What this movie is about is, and boy there's a lot going on here, Uh, you have an ex-convict, he's working undercover uh, for the government, And he's trying to build a case to take down this big uh, drug lord uh, so he can have his, all his records cleared. And he's free to live happy uh, with his family. Uh, And how would you not live happy when your wife is on a day armas? But anyway, um, (laughs) he's going to live happy with his family. But uh, the deal is supposed to go to, they're supposed to be taking these drugs to the big guy. Uh, but the guy he's with, like, is like the nephew, I believe, of the big guy, and he's like, my uncle will be so, uh, will be so amazed when I bring him tons of cash instead, uh, because you, we've got this side deal, and, and this guy says he knows this guy that you know, and is, you know, there's just all sorts of stuff going on. Well, anyway, the, the guy that they're going to make this deal with ends up being an undercover cop. So, uh, that gets... The police involved, uh, which is Common, uh, who knew this guy. He was like the the this guy supervisor. And anyway, this undercover cop, uh, the Joel Kinnaman's character tries to tell him, "It's like, look, you don't know what you're doing. Get out of here. You're in over your head. I know you're a cop. Get out of here." He tries to get the guy out of there, but the cop's just like, "No way, man. I'm not a cop." And then he reveals himself to be a cop and gets himself killed. Uh, this leads to the big bad boss man saying that uh, his nephew saved Joel Kinnaman's life and that Joel Kinnaman is going to have to violate his parole and go back to prison so he can run drugs there for like five years and then he's free to do whatever he wants. Uh, and so uh, his boss is at the government uh, led by Rosamund Pike and Clive Owen who is her superior tell him go ahead do it we'll get you out of there. Uh, but then, uh, they end up burning him and he's stuck in prison. So he has to find a way to get out. Okay. I'm going to warn you, I'm going to spoil the end of this movie. Um, because I hated the end of this movie. It, this, the end of this movie tried to make it so, uh, I don't know what, even, I don't even know what the right word is. They tried to be so, uh, I don't want to say serious, but this ending could have, a movie like this, you could have had a happy, you could have had a happy ending and they could, they would be like, well, this is a happy ending. No, it's a cut off ending. Um, and I'll, and I'll explain in a minute. Um, in this movie, I think one of its biggest problems is that there's just so much going on. There's so many moving pieces. Uh, you have Joel Kinnaman's character and his family, and he's trying to do everything right by his family. Uh, his, his wife is behind him 1000%. Um, you have Rosamund Pike and Clive Owen trying to run their operation with him. You have the bad guys trying to run their operation. And then you have Common, uh, trying to, uh, track down Joe Ken- Joel Kinnaman's character because he thinks he's the one that killed the cop, even though he wasn't. Uh, so you have him trying to track down him and then he has a detective buddy. So there's just everything going on all at once and really it's just almost too much going on it's just while i understood what was going on it was a little hard to follow um again you you'll know what's going on but you're just like there's so many moving pieces it's just all over the place and it just it's kind of messy um i won't say the performances were bad or anything uh i thought you know what they what, what the actors were bringing to this movie worked for this movie. I mean, granted, most of the characters were very one-dimensional. You know, Common's character, he's the, you know, he's the cop, just the good cop trying to 
you know, solve the murder. And then Rosamund Pike, she's the, you know, the subordinate that will she or won't she help our main character in the end. Clive Owens, the douchebag you know is going to be a douchebag. Uh, Ana de Armas, she's the supportive wife. Uh, Joe Kinnaman, he's, he's just the guy trying to do right by his family. There's just really, though the performances were fine, there was just really no... I don't know. There was just no complexity to these characters because they all had what they were going to do. And other than Rosamund Pike's character, who you, it's like, is she or is she, is she not going to help him again? But that being said, you know, she's going to help him, uh, in the end because her boss is a douche. Uh, again, there's just so much going on, but there's so many one dimensional characters. Again, the performances are fine. It's just, there's not enough complexity. Uh, you know, you could have had Joel Kinnaman's character saying, well, if I'm going to get screwed by the government, I might as well stick with the bad guys, that kind of stuff, you know? But no, you always know he's going to try to do the right thing, even if he has to do wrong things to accomplish it. Uh, so there's really just no complexity with the characters and just too much complexity with the plot. Um, thankfully, the movie is about two hours. Uh, it's it's not overly long, if it were any longer. Uh and I'll get to that in a minute. If you're any longer, it'd probably be bad, in, except in one case. Um, because it's, there was just too much going on. You didn't need any more stories being told. You didn't need to follow any more characters. It was just a lot going on with too many people. Uh, again, they had some good good actors in this. And I, and I enjoyed their performances. But the story itself was just a little all over the place. Now, uh, I want to talk about the ending. Um, okay. Now, in a movie like this, with as much crap as our character has to go through, just all throughout the movie, I mean, he is getting screwed left and right in this movie for almost completely two hours. You would have thought, and this is the only way I would have extended the movie, you would have thought they would have done a six months later, one year later, something like that with this one, but oh no! Let's talk about the stupid ending to this. Um, the ending to this is he's supposed to meet up with his family. Rosamund Pike has his family. See, he had to escape prison. And Rosamund Pike, of course, because we knew she would, she helps him escape. Uh, he gets out of prison. He pretends he dresses up as one of the guards. And they take him in an ambulance. And she's in the ambulance. And she lets him take over the ambulance. And... And uh, get away. But she has uh, his family in a park. And he's supposed to approach him. And he's under this underpass thing in the shadows. And, uh, you know, Rosamund Pike's kind of trying to signal him. No, there's people around. They're going to grab you when you pop out. And then all of a sudden, Common walks up to him in the underpass thing. Saying, and, and he says... Uh, you need to stay here. Don't go out there. You're being watched or they're, they're watching for you. Uh, and you know, you might get to see your family soon when this whole thing blows over because, you know, of course the, the, the people that need to go to jail, go to jail, right? Including douchebag Clive Owen, uh, because he was going to leave this man to die, uh, in prison that he, uh, allowed to be put there and everything, even though the guy was innocent. So, you know, he's getting in trouble for the things that Joel Kinnaman should have been, uh, should have been forgiven for and pardoned for, but oh no, he has to stay in hiding. And Common's like, stay in hiding. It, it might take, it might take a while. I can't remember how long he said, but he was like, it's going to take a while. You'll, you'll be with your family soon. It might take a while, right? Okay. Do they say all of a sudden fade to black and go six months later, a year later, and then he, you get to see our character who deserves a happy ending and get to meet up with his family and they get to embrace and he gets to see his kid and uh, no the movie just fades out and it's over credits and i'm just sitting there going are you kidding me this feels so incomplete so if you're gonna extend the movie you extend it with letting him get with his family at the end because are we supposed to assume that yeah in six months a year whatever he gets to be with his family sure you're supposed to assume that but man, does that, it's just like this guy gets kicked into testes for the entire movie. And then the final, the final shot of the movie, 
one last swift kick in the balls. So it's, you know, he doesn't even get to see his family other than far away at a park. And that's the end of the movie. And it ruins this movie, even though I wasn't loving it to begin with. It would have helped if it had a happy ending for a character that deserved a happy ending. So yeah, uh, I don't recommend this movie. It's free on Amazon Prime and I still don't recommend it. Again, the performances are fine. I have no problem with them. But it's just a messy story with a crappy ending. See you later.